everyone over the age of 50 should get a booster shot. That advice coming today from the National Immunization Committee. And Canadians between the ages of 18 and 49 can get a third dose six months after their second. Now, some provinces across this country have already opened up their booster bookings, some from 18 and up. Federal Health Minister Jean-Yves Duclos says doses are ready to be deployed. Thanks to our strong procurement strategy, we will be able to quickly deploy those booster shots and provide an additional degree of protection for Canadians. Now, let me say this again. If you are eligible, please get your booster shot. Dr. Howard New is the Deputy Chief Public Health Officer of Health for Canada. He is in Ottawa. Dr. New, good to have you uh, back on the program. So NASA is strongly recommending adults 50 and up get that third dose and of an mRNA vaccine if they didn't get one already before, but saying for the younger age cohort, 18 to 49, that it's a, a discretionary recommendation. Why is there that distinction? Well, there's a lot to unpack there. You know, obviously, uh, NASA has been looking at this question for quite some time, looking at the, you know, both the data here in Canada as well as what's happening around the world. And so the, the question of booster doses in general is a very live issue. Uh, what we're seeing in, in other countries around the world and starting to see to some uh, degree in Canada is that at a population level, uh, that uh, the immunity that, that, that's been afforded, and very good uh, protection, by the way, in terms of infection, but most importantly against a serious illness, uh, does seem to uh, diminish over time. Uh, but the other good thing to, from a Canadian perspective is that, uh, you know, because we used uh, for many uh, Canadians, uh, you know, here in the country, uh, a sort of a longer uh, interval uh, between doses, between the first and second dose of the of the vaccines we've used, that actually has uh, stood us in good stead because uh, it's shown us to have a, at a population level sort of a longer lasting immunity and more of a robust immune response. So that's the good news. But as you can see, uh, countries like the U.S. and Israel uh, I think uh, those that maybe have used the shorter dose interval, mm -hmm. uh, they were seeing, I think, a bit of a drop off earlier in terms of the overall population immunity. And so if you look at the Canadian context, uh, uh, the reason why we're having a, a bit of this segregation, as, as you put it, is exactly because of that. Uh, when you look at who uh, received their uh, doses initially, it, it was probably those in the highest risk groups, like uh, elderly uh, individuals, especially in long term care, you know, over the age of 50 and so on. And then, of course, other uh, at-risk groups of people who are immunocompromised, uh, you know, people living in remote and, you know, indigenous communities and so on and so forth. So, so that's certainly part of the thinking. And if uh, you look at the younger uh, individuals, they uh, started receiving or, you know, off, obviously even the authorization of the vaccines, uh, you know, even the pediatric doses has been quite recent. And so they're still in the midst of getting, you know, for the most part, their primary series of, of uh, vaccine. And so the, the talk of booster doses for them is probably a bit uh, farther off in the future. Uh, the key point I think that, that we need to raise also is that, uh, you know, regardless of uh, uh, what group you're in, that the, 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 the strong recommendation is to wait at least six months after you finish your primary series to get that booster dose. Okay, and, and, and walk me through that. I mean, why the six month mark and, and what does waning efficacy look like? Is it that your, your, your odds of contracting COVID are increased or that the odds of serious illness are increased or is it both? Uh, well, like I say, in terms of the, the six month uh, uh, interval, like I say, it's based a lot on the sort of the population experience in terms of uh, what we call uh, uh, studies looking at the real world effectiveness, but also throughout uh, the world in terms of other studies actually looking at the you know vaccine effectiveness over time. You're looking at uh, things like antibody levels, but also uh, in terms of the real world experience uh, uh, that we're seeing in terms of increasing rates of infection and also that what we call a, a bit of a lagging indicator afterwards. Uh, uh, with uh, more severe illness such as hospitalizations and, and so on. And uh, uh, it's starting to happen here in Canada that you can see that, uh, you know, the, the difference between those uh, vaccinated, unvaccinated is that, uh, you know, unvaccinated uh, obviously are still at much higher risk. And I do want to underline the point that it's so important that if you haven't even received your primary series of, of a vaccine, that you please go ahead and do that. So that's that's number one. But in terms of the waning immunity, uh, it does seem that, uh, you know, uh, lots of what we call breakthrough infections are happening or at least an increasing number where people who have been fully vaccinated are coming uh, down with the infection. But the good news still uh, to date is that in terms of serious illness, the vaccine certainly uh, appear to give very good protection against serious illness and uh, the risk of hospitalization. So that's very good. And the reason I think also in terms of the timing of the booster doses is that uh, we don't want to wait too long. You know, we're trying to find that sweet spot. We know that, you know, here in Canada, 
you know, it is uh, the winter. <laughs> Looking here in Ottawa, I, I see snow on the ground. Mm -hmm. And uh, we also anticipate, obviously, with the holiday season, uh, more get-togethers, people gathering indoors. Uh, what we don't want to do is, is wait too long and wait for, you know, the data, the lagging indicators in terms of hospitalizations and so on to increase. Because once you do start a vaccination program, it, it takes two weeks, even for any given individual, to mount a good response to, uh, you know, that booster dose in uh, two weeks is, is critical. And we don't want to have it uh, when uh, we're in the midst of, uh, unfortunately, you know, a, a resurgence in terms of, uh, you know, uh, waning immunity, case counts increasing and hospitalization. So that's the reason for the uh, uh, the recommendation today. Okay, so if we know about that waning uh, uh, efficacy is a thing, particularly in those older age cohorts, is it likely that we're going to need a booster on the booster? Like, are we likely at the 12-month mark, the 18-month mark? Oh, that, that that's, a, that's a live question that uh, we'll just have to obviously uh, wait and see. I think uh, uh, we did have a, a technical presser today, and I think uh, the point was made that, you know, we're, we're learning as we go. And if you look at, uh, you know, even other vaccines that we use, you know, well-established vaccines like against hepatitis, uh, against HPV, if you look at the initial product monograph and the uh, initial sort of calendar or dosing schedule, that was modified over time as we gain more real-world experience in terms of uh, how the vaccines work. You know, obviously, being in the middle of the pandemic right now, uh, we, we, we're doing the best we can, and the manufacturers, I uh, give them credit, they, they did the clinical trials, that they looked at a certain dosage interval, and they came out with, uh, obviously, uh, you know, the products that have been approved by Health Canada. But having said that, you know, you know, with the goodness of time, we might, uh, you know, in the future indicate, well, the actual so-called primary series to get that initial good response might take, you know, one, two, three doses over, you know, certain uh, set periods of time. Yeah. And then in terms of a booster dose to actually sort of, uh, you know, uh, uh, reawaken or, or to reinforce the initial primary response, that might also, uh, uh, you know, I, I think uh, be determined at, at a future date. And so who knows what the schedule might be in the future, but we're working with uh, the data and the information we have now. I've only got two minutes left with you, Dr. New, so uh, if we can move through some things very quickly, uh, particularly looking at the uh, Omicron variant, uh, where's your thinking given the, the limited evidence that's out there, some of it coming out of South Africa, certainly some of it coming out of Europe, about what Omicron, when it comes here in Canada in a much larger way, what, what we're likely to experience? Well, I think, uh, to be honest, uh, if I look at what's happening with the Omicron variant, I think it's just a wake-up call again that, uh, you know, the pandemic isn't over. You know, what's happening around the world touches us here in Canada, and we're all interconnected. And as we've said, I think, uh, before that, you know, the pandemic isn't over, you know, till it's over everywhere, not just here in Canada, even though we're, we're doing quite well with our vaccination and so on. And so uh, with respect to the Omicron, uh, the big three questions, I think, as scientists and public health authorities around the world are looking at is, you know, is it more transmissible? You know, does it actually cause more serious disease? And then also, very importantly, does it have any impact in terms of the effectiveness of vaccines? And so that's what uh, we're, we're all looking at the data and examining the situation in South Africa, but also other countries which uh, have had now uh, uh, cases of the Omicron variant. And so, you know, as we accumulate the, the evidence, uh, well, we'll have a better idea of how we could or should be reacting to this. But I think, you know, we have to take it seriously. It is a variant that has uh, quite a number of mutations. And so uh, I think that's the reason uh, with, uh, I think, uh, a lot of caution uh, we have, uh, you know, instituted certain measures, uh, you know, at our border, but uh, it's really to gain time because, uh, yeah. as you see, uh, you know, it's ready everywhere. We, we're just trying to slow it down as we buy time to maybe get a better idea of what uh, we need to do in the future. You know, I, I, the last question I'll ask you, and it's, of course, we're heading into what is a holiday period for many people. Um, and I think about the last 20 months, I think about something that you said many months ago, closer to the beginning of, of all of this, when you were asked if you would go into a restaurant. And I, I'm going to paraphrase your answer, but you basically said, you know, there, there, you remember back when there were smoking sections in restaurants, it didn't mean that smoke <laughs> didn't go into the non-smoking section. And that at that time, you were, you were not, inclined yourself to go into a restaurant so as we get up to this period of of holiday parties and uh, bigger family get-togethers where are you like would you would you now go into a restaurant for instance where's your comfort level well uh, thank you for the question I think uh, what you're you're really looking at is sort of the whole issue of uh, going to what we call indoor spaces you know closed spaces uh, maybe potentially with a lot of people uh, you know with maybe a poor ventilation so I would say that uh, 
be it a restaurant or be it, let's say, even a private gathering with uh, individuals, I think uh, the most important thing uh, to look at is uh, what's everyone's sort of individual risk assessment and risk tolerance, you know, who, who are the other people sort of in that setting? You know, if I was someone maybe with uh, underlying medical conditions, uh, you know, my risk tolerance for what I would want to do in terms of being in contact with others, vaccinated or not, might be different compared to maybe a, a younger individual. So for me, the first thing is that uh, certainly I would want to be in a situation where everyone else was fully vaccinated, such as myself. So, so that's number one. Uh, number two now, because of, you know, breakthrough infections and, and, and so on, I think uh, uh, you need to maybe have a careful discussion with uh, people in your household and others for family gatherings that even with, uh, you know, uh, fully vaccinated uh, individuals in a setting that uh, it may be, uh, you know, uh, with everyone's comfort level, a good idea to continue wearing, a, you know, a well, a sort of, a, you know, made well-fitted, uh, you know, a, a face mask even indoors. And then now the, the third thing is that uh, ventilation, you know, uh, what's the ventilation like in, in your household? Can you maybe open the windows and improve the air circulation? You know, maybe uh, for a, a certain period of time, obviously, we <laughs> have to be careful with yeah, it's, the yeah, tricky cold to pop weather a window in mid-December uh, in this in this country in many places. Yeah. Uh, for a few minutes or at least yeah. maybe, a, maybe a set number of period, uh, minutes, uh, you know, per hour. So I think uh, certainly would, would help the situation. So all those types of things, I think, uh, become part of the equation and what, the, what kind of things you should be looking at and, and thinking about. All right. Dr. New, thanks so much for your time. Appreciate it. You're very welcome. Hi, I'm Vashi Capello's host of Power in Politics. See more of our show by subscribing to the CBC News Channel or click the link for another video.